Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hello everybody. I'm Sitara Aisha. I just graduated from high school. My sister Shama, who is in grade 7, and my brother Nabil, who is in grade 5, will be helping me a lot during my presentation. We are planning a series of presentations based on data networking basics. And our YouTube ID is to tell you our story. Our main target audience is young kids under 15 years of age who are capable of being young IT professionals. And the special thing about our video is that it's single shot, unedited, short, and easy to understand. Today is my first class, and I'm going to teach you all about VLAN. VLAN stands for Virtual LAN, Virtual Local Area Network. Let me start by teaching you the basics of LAN, okay, the local area network. If you have a group of computers connected together, that makes a LAN. A small group of computers, it could be in your home or in your dad's office or your school. Just a small group of computers makes a LAN. Let me give you an example. It could be a bunch of computers connected to each other on a hub. This is the symbol of a hub. A single arrow indicates a hub. A hub is a network device which just acts as a passive connection terminal. It doesn't do anything. It just acts as a connection point for all the PCs. Over here, PC 1, 2, 3, and 4. They're connected to this hub on the ports 1, 2, 3, and 4. They're connected on these four ports. What's a port? port is just a connection point. A physical connection point is called a port. So what does this make? It's a group of computers connected together. That's a LAN. Another example, let's use another network device. This double-headed arrow. What does it indicate? This is the symbol of the switch. The switch is a little bit different from a hub. This double arrow arrow symbol is a switch which is a little bit different from a hub. How is it different? This is an intelligent network device. It's intelligent because it just doesn't act as a connection point. It learns the MAC address of all the PCs it's connected to. Over here PC 1, 2, 3 and 4 on the ports 1, 2, 3 and 4. What is a MAC address? All PCs have two addresses. Number one, it's the IP address. And number two, it's the MAC address that I was just talking about. The IP address or the internet protocol address is just defined by us, that is the users. We just give it to the computer. The MAC address is the built-in or the burnt-in address of the network card present in each computer. It's already there, the manufacturers of the network cards make it's built in inside the network cards, okay? So that's the two types of address, IP address and the MAC address. So in a small Ethernet LAN, Ethernet is a type of LAN, in a small Ethernet LAN, the computers basically communicate with each other with MAC addresses, okay? So in this diagram, the PCs will communicate with each other through the switch with the help of MAC addresses. So another difference between the communication of a hub and a switch is this. When PC1, suppose, wants to communicate with PC4, it sends a data packet, it sends its data packet, okay, let me just show it with like this. It sends it to the hub. The hub, no intelligence. What does it do? It doesn't know what to do. It sends it to all the other ports except the one it received on because it doesn't know. It doesn't know the MAC address. It doesn't know the IP address either. It just sends it through. What do the other two PCs do? They don't know the packet. They just drop it. They just drop the packets. They don't take it. But PC4, it sees its MAC address. It opens it. It knows that it is for, it. It's, uh, it is for uh, uh, PC4. It knows that. It's for him. So then what does it do? It sends back a reply to the hub. Again, the hub doesn't know what to do. Who to send to? It just floods the packet throughout and only PC1 will open the packet and reply and the process continues, okay? This way, a lot of bandwidth is consumed because of this network device. Bandwidth means the ability of a link to transfer data. 
in bits, okay? If, for example, two megabits per second, that's the bandwidth of the link, okay? So that's what bandwidth means. So in this way, only these two PCs will be able to communicate with each other because there's no bandwidth left for the other PCs. All the lines are consumed just because PC1 wants to communicate with PC4. That's one disadvantage of the hub. In the case of a switch, it learns the MAC address, right? What it does is that, suppose you have a brand new switch, okay? You have a brand new switch, okay? You open it from the box. And then, what does the switch do? Firstly, if PC1 wants to communicate, let's take PC2, okay? What it does is it sends the data packet to the switch. The switch opens it. It sees, okay, I got the data packet on port 1 from this PC, and it sees the MAC address. It stores the MAC address and the port number, okay? And this table is called the CAM table. This special name is there, CAM table, okay? Where it stores the MAC address of the PCs plus the port number of itself where it received that on, okay? The data packet. So, suppose uh, ma the uh, MAC address of PC1 is a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a okay? Suppose that's the MAC address of PC1. And it received it on its port number one. So this is the first data it got, okay? This is stored in its count table. So now it knows, okay, PC1 is on my port number one. That way, this PC1 wants to communicate with PC2, right? But there's no other information on the switch. So it, like a hub in the beginning, it will set flood it throughout. So it sends to all the other PCs, but the other PCs won't communicate. So they just drop the packets, except for PC2. PC2 will reply back to the switch. So then the, PC, the switch knows, okay, now on my port 2, there's PC2 with, say, MAC address BBBB, BBBB, okay? Suppose, okay, BBBB. So now it knows on port 1, PC1, on port 2, PC2. This is how it slowly and gradually builds up its CAM table, okay? That's why the switch is called an intelligent device. It builds up its MAC address, and then after that, it doesn't flood it throughout the network. It just sends it to the destination port from the source port, okay? That's how the switch works. So each and every device on the switch gets equal bandwidth. It's not like a hub that only two PCs can communicate with each other at one time. All the PCs can communicate with each other in case of a switch. Now, let's see a simple LAN diagram, okay? Shema, can you please show me the first diagram? Okay, this just shows a simple LAN, okay? And the network device is the hub over here, and these are the workstations or the PCs connected to the hub, along with this server, it could be a web server or, um, you know, email server, anything. And then this printer. This is a small, simple, private LAN, okay? So as I explained before, if one PC wants to communicate with, say, another PC, it just floods throughout all the ports of the hub, okay? That's in case of a hub. Now, let's see uh, a diagram of a VLAN, okay? Over here, you see the intelligent device, Mr. Switch A, okay? Over here, there are ports 532 and 764. These are the ports which are being used. So on these ports, these are the engineering PCs, and on these ports, there are the marketing PCs. Just ignore these uh, tags over here, VLAN ID 1 and VLAN ID 2. I will come back to that in a moment, okay? Now let's just see these PCs. Just assume that they all are in one big VLAN 1, okay? VLAN 1 is the default VLAN. Just assume they can, they're can. they not in any other VLAN. They're not in different VLANs, okay? They all are in one big VLAN, that is VLAN 1. So, if uh, this piece, engineering PC on port 2 wants to communicate with this marketing PC on port 7, it will send to the switch, and the switch knows the destination MAC address, it will just forward it to port 7, okay? That's how normally switches work without VLANs, okay? Now, suppose that the marketing manager, you know, he said, okay, I don't want this, uh, you know, communication between the different departments. I want, you know, separation between them. I want to separate the engineering department from the marketing department. What do I do? But there's one thing. I don't want to change their physical location. Let all the users be sitting where they are actually sitting. Let them sit there, but 
I want some logical separation. I want some logical separation so that they can't communicate between the departments, okay? What should he do? He wants a logical separation, but he doesn't want to physically change the location of the users. Then we make use of the VLANs that I talked about just now, okay? VLANs. What we do is you separate these engineering PCs and assign the ports 5, 3, and 2 to VLAN 1. And you assign the ports 7, 6, and 4 to VLAN 2, okay? I will talk about configuration of the switch in the end of, our, of uh, the lesson, okay? This is what we do. Now, if the switch on port 5 wants to communicate to the switch, uh, to the, the PC, sorry, pardon me, the uh, PC on port 5 wants to communicate to the PC on port 6, there won't be any connection possible. You know why? Because they are in different VLANs. This is in VLAN 1 and this is in VLAN 2. There's no communication possible between these two departments, okay, because of the creation of VLANs. Now, as I told you before, switches learn the MAC address, right? It learns the MAC address with the help of data frames. I told you when a switch first sends a data packet over here, that's the data frame, okay? The, the switch checks the data frame and it finds out the MAC address. The data frame basically consists of the user data, okay, user data, and the header. The header consists of the control information and the management information like the source IP address, destination IP address, source uh, MAC address, destination MAC address, etc. Such uh, things as present in the header, okay. In the header, there's the VLAN tag. Why don't I just show you a picture? Shama, can you just show me the uh, picture of the header? This is a data frame, okay? This data frame consists of the user data in blue and the rest is the header, which is the control information, okay? The blue field is the user data. It can be up to 1500 bytes. Then let's see the control information. This is the destination address. This is the source address. And this is the VLAN tag I was talking about. It's made up of four bytes, okay? And then the type and length of the packet. And then the FCS. FCS stands for frame check sequence. Now, what we need to concentrate now, since we are studying about VLANs, is the VLAN tag here in pink. This is the enlarged version of the VLAN tag. It consists of four portions, okay? The tag protocol identifier, and then the priority levels, then the canonical format indicator, and this. This is what we need, the VLAN identifier, okay? The VLAN ID, which consists of 12 bits, okay? So since it consists of 12 bits, the highest number of VLAN ID is 4095. That's the highest number of VLAN ID you can have. I'll have, we'll soon be having a class on binary uh, calculations and that we'll see into the details of this. But that's how we get 4095 as the highest VLAN ID, okay? So that's that. Uh, this way when uh, the switch receives, let me just clear it up. Well, how does this VLAN tag helps the switch understand the different VLANs on the ports? The switch assigns the ports to different VLANs, okay? And then it makes up another special table called the VLAN database. The VLAN database. This stores the different port numbers, okay? The different port numbers of the switch plus, what do you think? The port numbers and the VLAN ID, okay? So then the switch knows, okay, if on this port, this VLAN, and on the second port, the second VLAN. For example, this is a switch, port one, two, three, and four, okay? 